Do you have a wisteria or a viney bush that's out of control? We do. We have this one, whatever that is. This one? Oh, this one's going places. This one here. And there's this little thing. And we have this one, which is the one that we're going to be going over today on Bofo Bart Gardening with the Wife. But those are supposed to be like that. After you watch this episode, you're going to know how to properly groom your green beast and some of the specific things that you want to look out for when you tame yours. We also discovered some cool new things. From Amazon. From Amazon. Of course. To enhance our pergola and wisteria. You have something? Oh no, I was breathing. Oh, okay. <laughs> One thing that you want to make sure of is that your wisteria has plenty of space. They can grow very quickly. Is that it? Quickly? Yeah. They can grow really quickly? Is that said right? Yeah. They can grow very quickly. Wisteria is known to get really heavy. Along with the space, you also want to worry about the supporting structure. It's important. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. You're here because this is gardening with the wife and you're my, she's my wife. That's Courtney, the wife. So make sure you have it on a sturdy structure. Aren't you glad I built this one? Yeah, I like it. I know, it's sturdy too. My wife took a whole day to stay in this structure and it looks amazing because of it. Yep, and we didn't kick the stain over. It. It's a spot right there. Pergolas are a great structure for wisterias because they also turn the wisteria into like a little bit of like a shade tree. Canopy? A plant bed canopy. Yeah, sure. Is that the best term? They provide shade. They do. This one's not there yet though. How long do you think it's gonna be? A year. A whole year? No, I mean, look how much- It's already been two years. Another very important thing is that you wanna make sure your wisteria is not close to any other plants because it's known to take out its competition. Kinda like the mob. You're also gonna wanna take into consideration your property borderline with your neighbors. Our neighbors are really cool. Goes in it constantly. Because, yeah, it's known to trespass. He's a pretty bad boy. I thought it was a lady. Okay, it's a lady. All right, yeah, sorry. Bad girl. Another important thing about a wisteria is maintaining. Wisterias love to play with things, especially electrical lines. They love them. Anything they can grab onto, really. Okay, pretty much anything that they can grab onto. So if you have something you don't want your wisteria to grab onto, make sure you keep a close eye onto it. But for me, I know it's electrical. Why the electrical part? You see, electrical has current going through it. And if there's any part of that wire that's bare, you're gonna... And the wisteria is wet. So if the wisteria is wet and you have exposed wiring, that's gonna create a giant live wire. So if you would touch the wisteria and the moisture on the wisteria is touching your fingers, does that make sense? Yeah, well, you're, you're gonna it's get electrified, but you're not gonna necessarily going to get electrocuted. But it does present a safety hazard. It does present a safety hazard. And I guess if your wisteria is very dry, it could catch on fire. You think that could happen? Probably. I don't know. Just don't let it get all up in that yeah, don't electrical. Let it go on wire. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Now, to maintain your wisteria, you're going to need the right tools. The majority of your trimming will be done by using a simple pruning shears. Overall, I was pretty impressed with the sniffer. Sweetie, were you impressed? I was, actually. I mean, I didn't use the big ones, but I like the little ones They're quite really a bit. sharp. For thicker pieces, bypass looper trimmers will be the best way to go. What are these called anyway, sweetie? I don't know. Shears? Mm. Head shears can also be used to keep your new growth under control. I put a link below in case you want to check it out. Oh, wow. This thing's awesome! So what am I allowed to cut here? Nothing. You're just doing the twisty bits. I'm gonna use my big cover. But it would be helpful if you take this stuff as I trim it. <gasps> oh, they extend! Huh. It would be helpful okay, if you take fine. this stuff as I trim it. Got it. Got it. I mean, you can trim that stuff up into little bits. Yeah, it's being helpful. These are really sharp to me. Don't cut yourself. I'm not gonna cut myself. Another cool thing is these little buttons right here, you can push them down. I thought you could, oh, I'm not doing it right, I'm an idiot. You can push them down, they kind of collapse into the handle, making them easier to store and also easier to reach whenever you need the extra length. Lola likes them. You're also 
going to want to look out for your roofing areas. Like this right here, this uh, sheathing that leads up to your roof. But yeah, they like to kind of creep and crawl up into that, kind of spread its wings, make your house fly away. But yeah, if you have any roofing, siding. Anything with gaps. It'll just go right up in there. Courtney, though, she keeps this wisteria in line. I have to come out like once a month. It sounds like kind of annoying, but I really like it, so. Now, if you want your wisteria to perform like a Formula One racing car, you're gonna to wanna to do a few things. Now, one thing that you can do, however we don't, is give it fertilizer. Just because it's honestly doing pretty good the way it is right now. Another key part of performance is making sure you cut back your wisteria. Now, if you're able to do it once every two weeks, that's probably best. We do ours around once a month, just because it is kind of time consuming. But realistically, this thing does go out of control and it goes out of control quick. If you want your wisteria to grow at a faster rate, cut it back often. And at the end of the season, you can even cut it back even harder to promote more growth the following year. That'll give you more flowers too. Now there is a dark side to the flowers of this wisteria. Can you see the flowers anyway? There are no flowers. Oh, good. We don't want them. They have flowers in spring. Oh, flowers in spring. I didn't know that. And that is that they can be toxic to animals and people. Yeah, so don't go outside and eat them. Yeah, don't eat that. Yeah. And I know my dogs eat pretty much anything that's on the lawn. So we try to keep this thing flowering to a minimum. We're also just wanting this one mostly just for the shade. If you're looking to enhance your wisteria, put on these Edison bulbs. I highly recommend them. Make sure that they're waterproof and made for outdoor. What? Outdoors. Made for the outdoors. Another thing that I found useful is this thing right here. This right here is the Runac outdoor dimmer switch. Just put in your Wi-Fi information. Then after you do that, you'll see that it pops up right there on your phone then. You just hit that and it just walks you through the rest. Let's see if it works. Haha, <laughs> it works, sweetie. This plug can be used for Christmas lights and whatever else you might want to use it for outdoors because it's totally waterproof. I'll put a link down below in case you guys want to check it out. We can even set the timer so they go on and off at night. I know we're pretty pleased with it. Hey, we can come here now. We're saying goodbye. Basically, we really like the wisteria. It's labor intensive. But it's worth it at the end of the day. It makes my wife happy. Thanks again for stopping by this episode of Fofo Bart Gardening with the Wife. And if you like this episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's also that bell you can ring. That's cool. That way, you'll be sure not to miss these great learning experiences. That's it for now. Take care, everybody. Bye. Taming the Green Beast. Oh.